Alright, so here's my water storage tank that I have finally finished setting up for my house here. The reason I've done this is I have a low yield well um, here in North Carolina. It's a deep well, about 300 feet deep. I think the pump sits around 280 feet. Pretty standard for this area of the state. Um, problem is, is that it has an incredibly low recovery rate, about 0.83 gallons a minute. And as the water level drops, when you're using water, um, it tends to pull a lot of sediment off the side of the casing and the bedrock. Just stirs it up and it plugs up the filters like crazy. Here's kind of an example of what it looks like when it's dried, but it's kind of this sticky clay sediment. That's some filter media on there. That doesn't come from the ground. Um, but it's, it's really bad. Um, I rent a room out to a friend of mine and his girlfriend, and between the three of us, we could be going through one of those filters every couple days sometimes, um, depending on how much we used. And, you know, you, you change the filter, do some laundry, take a shower, and the filter's already covered in that stuff. And it just, it, it plugs it up, and you've got crappy water pressure, and it sucks. So this is my solution to all that. Um, what I've done is basically... There's a piece of three inch conduit there that I'll show more of in a minute. It, I trenched all the way out to the well house and buried that conduit. And through the conduit, I pulled a piece of half inch PEX, a piece of one inch PEX, and then a new wire for power. I've bypassed, excuse me, all the um, pressure switch and pressure tank on the well. And I've got 100 amps coming in the shop over there in that breaker box. And so um, I actually have this 240 outlet that was here from the guy that built the place and i've never used it so i just extended the wires out of the box and put this box here with a switch in it so i can turn the pump on and off and so that's controlling the power to the pump right now um, i need to automate that which or automate the filling of the tank which will be kind of the next thing so the wellhead has a dull valve um, on the pecs coming out of it and so I, the, the dole valve that I have restricts it down to three quarters of a gallon a minute. So theoretically, the water level should never really drop in the well because it can recover faster than I'm pulling water out of there. But it's getting kind of close to the limit of the um, amount of water that needs to go by the well pump to cool it. But uh, like I, I would have liked to have been able to do a, a gallon a minute, however... Um, you know, I, I, I didn't want the water level in there to change at all if possible. So, so far, no issues. Um, I have left it on overnight, left it on hours at a time. No problem. It turns right back up. Um, the old control box, I don't know if this was related to it or anything, but the capacitor went bad on it. So I had it actually an identical box that was new, so I just put it in the housing for right now, and it works fine. So the water coming out of the out of the well it's restricted down and it comes up through that little half inch line there's a relief valve there that I need to plumb into a drain along with I want to do the tank into a drain the filter into a drain and the pump into a drain but I haven't got around to doing that yet so that's just there if for some reason one of the filters was to get totally plugged when the well pump was running it just gives that water somewhere to go um, so that it wouldn't deadhead the well pump and then kind of ignore this for right now um, that's water from the wells coming into this um, backwashing filter this is actually an old mineral tank that was in the well house it wasn't used for anything when i bought the place it had like a very rudimentary backwash system with a bunch of valves and actually ports that went on the side that i plugged off so i bought a backwash valve just a manual one and the distributor tube and everything and a cubic foot of the filter ag media and so far, I'm super impressed with that media. It does a really nice job. Um, so that's pretty much pulling out all the sediment that does come out of the well, even at the, at the low draw, which is some. And then I go through one of these cartridge filters. It's like five microns or something, maybe smaller, um, just to catch anything that were to make it through there. And then we're running into the tank. There's a piece of PVC in there that just directs the water all the way to the bottom. So I've got one of these little Harbor Freight shallow well pumps. This is the second one. Story on that in a minute. Um, there's a floating pickup inside the tank. Like right now you can see the water levels there. And there's a, a 
floating ball with a little chain on it and the strainer pickup deal sits about six inches below the top of the water level which is supposed to be the cleanest water um, so it's going through that there's flexible tubing like this inside and then I've got it running into the pump here check valve cycle stop valve um, and then it's just going out here and you can see it actually runs down that where that T is down back into the conduit going out to the well house. The reason I have it running back out to the well house is from there it's just connected to the existing water line which runs kind of all the way around the house. Um, eventually I'll get around to replumbing this house because it has all the old polybutylene pipe. It's just a double wide manufactured home. So um, unfortunately that's not something I'm ready to undertake yet because you've got to deal with the underbelly and all that bullshit. So it'll be somewhere about here. I'll just run a straight shot through the um, underbelly of the house with the hot and the cold water line because I want to relocate the um, hot water heater in here as well so it's not inside the house anymore. So yeah, that's pretty much what's going on here. Um, like I said, I'm kind of lacking automation at the moment and unfortunately one of the toilets um, happened to not close the valve. The flapper valve didn't close all the way last night. Nobody heard it and went through. When I left the house it was at about 400 gallons of water, so it went through all that last night. And a little Harbor Freight pump, the old one stayed on overnight. And um, you can see it kind of, what it looked like is this nut. There's a nut that's bolted to the motor shaft, and it just melted. Once it got hot, it melted this right off, and you can see how it's kind of wavy looking. So, yeah, the impeller was toast, and then it looked like once the impeller came loose, it kind of drove it into the, I don't know, that's, like, I guess that makes kind of a Venturi deal there, it looks like. Um, yeah, because the water's coming in there, and then it goes down, so it just kind of provides cooling and, I guess, provides some of the priming ability with that pump. Um, but, yeah, that was done, and that's the thing about these cheap Harbor Freight pumps. You can't get parts for them. I'm curious to see if some of the Red Lion parts might fit them because you can get rebuild kits for those pumps on Amazon, and they look very similar and is much cheaper than buying a new pump. So, yeah, it was actually easier just to unbolt the housing from the old pump and bolt it back on the new pump without pulling all my plumbing off. I think I've finally got everything sealed up to where we don't have any, any drips anymore. These going from a metal to a PVC fitting is always kind of tricky, um, especially if you've got PVC over the metal fittings. That's one thing I've learned. If you can, go... Uh, the PVC inside the metal fitting because if you go over the PVC just tends to stretch and it doesn't like to seal so with very liberal applications of pipe dope I think we've finally got it got it sealed up here so yeah that sucks about the pump but um, so far I've actually been very happy with how they perform I tried to get it to do 4060 it wasn't happy about that so I just have it set back on 3050 um, which you know is okay I'd like to have that extra bit of water pressure so at some point I'll get a nicer pump but for now, these are, you know, relatively cheap, and it's something I can pick up locally. So if something happens, um, that just makes life a little easier, and I'm not waiting for something to get chipped. So, here's the conduit running out of the house. And I need to finish burying that, and you can see where the trench ran over here. comes up into the well house right there with the foam insulation is. I didn't feel like trying to go into the concrete below it. And you can hear the dole valve making all the noise in here. So the pressure tank and the switch are all bypassed in there. Um, the contacts are just disconnected and the two wires are wire nutted together in the pressure switch so eventually I'm going to take the control box out of there too and move it back inside but so far I've been very happy with the setup other than I need to set up some automation for the filling of the tank which I've got some stuff to start kind of coming up with ways to do that and the this pump I either need to do some kind of a float switch in the tank which I really don't want to do because 
I think it would it might be nicer just to do something that goes off the current of the pump because if the pump starts sucking air then the current will drop because the motor has very little load on it then um, so I think that'd be something pretty easy to do with some cheap electronics that shouldn't cost too much so that'll be the next step for sure for now just got to be careful make sure the flapper valve doesn't stick in the toilet um, so let me show you the backwash here the reason this is coming over here is for the backwash it's just the same line that's running down to the pecs of the well house it's just coming over here and so I will turn off the power to the well pump and close this and that way um, I can open this valve which is the clean water from the tank to backwash the filter because part of the problem is oh sorry pump just turned on and the cat freaked out so part of the problem is um, there's not enough flow with three quarters of a gallon a minute to appropriately backwash the filter so that's why I've, I'm backwashing with the water from the tank also this is nice clean water that I know has been filtered rather than taking the dirty water with the sediment in it and backwashing with that it kind of makes no sense so right now like I said it's not hooked up to a drain so we'll just hook up the garden hose and uh, see what we get out of it because this tank had zero gallons in it this morning and we're finally about to hit 450 here so the well pump's been running all day it'll be interesting to see um, what all comes out of there I've probably ran about I don't know a thousand gallons through it on this cycle um, in terms of the last time I backwashed it so I'm kind of aimed to do it once a week so let me get it hooked up all right sorry somebody must be taking a shower so we'll turn the well pump off close that valve that's hooked up going there set this to backwash open that see what we start getting out of there so you can see how dirty it is and honestly sometimes that's what the water would look like coming out of the well so you can imagine how quickly it would clog up a filter so I usually just backwash it till it runs clear so I'll be back in a minute so that's been running for I don't know a little short of 10 minutes and just cleared up nicely I'd fill up this bottle but uh, can't do that with one hand So I normally don't have to run it that long, but because of the having to fill up the whole tank, it was a little extra dirty. So put it on rinse now, and it'll kind of rebed the media to the bottom. It actually runs it through just like the water normally would, except instead of going out the output, it just directs it out the drain here. I just let it do that for a minute and get anything that it didn't get off the media off as it settles it back to the bottom of the mineral tank and then we'll be good to go. Alright that's done running so I usually turn this back to filter and let it filter into the tank for a second here and anything that did make it through there will end up in here and then Finally, we'll just turn this off, open that one back up. Turn that on. So it does take a decent chunk of water to backwash it, but like I said, I normally don't have to backwash it for that long. It's just because of the fact the tank I totally emptied out and I have had the thing pumping all day. But, um, yeah, I'm very happy with it. It was a lot of work. It wasn't really hard work. It was just a lot of it and kind of just thinking about different ways to do stuff. But uh, I'll make another video once I start getting the automation set up for filling this tank up.